Well hello everybody and welcome to Jeff's Baking Blog. Today I'm going to be making some uh, bread rolls. Now uh, they're sort of Kaiser rolls uh, but I don't have uh, a Kaiser cutout. What I have is a, a rosette type cutout and I'm going to be using that but I will also do some by hand so I can show you how the handmade Kaiser roll should be and the remainder I'll do with this cutout. Um, it's a fairly straightforward recipe and the ingredients are 500 grams of bread flour, though I have seen lots of recipes that just use plain or all-purpose flour, 300 millilitres of lukewarm uh, water at about 38 degrees, 100 degrees, uh, 38 Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and I have 20 grams of sugar, um, and 30 grams of butter, a teaspoon of salt, and seven grams of fast action uh, yeast. So the first thing I'm going to do is to put the water into the bowl of my stand mixer. I'm going to uh, add the yeast onto the water. And then I'm going to sprinkle a teaspoon of sugar on as well. That helps, uh, I can smell the yeast already, that helps the yeast to activate. So I'm just going to give that a bit of a stir and I'm going to leave it for five minutes uh, during which time the yeast should start to activate and uh, become frothy. Then we can go on to the next stage. Okay, so it's been five minutes now and uh, the yeast has dissolved and it's begun to activate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the remaining sugar into the bowl. And then I'm going to put the butter in as well. And I'm going to put in about 300 grams of the flour. And I'm going to keep the, the rest aside for the time being. And then I'm going to mix this together until it's all combined um, and then I'm going to start adding more flour with the salt and I'm going to put the salt in the remaining flour. Salt shouldn't go with yeast or be too close to the yeast because it will actually um, kill the yeast and so um, I'm leaving the salt until the yeast has all been incorporated into the dough as much as possible. So I'm going to mix this until it starts to come together and then I'll start adding more flour. And as it starts to combine, we'll need to scrape down the sides to make sure that we get that flour incorporated. And now that we've got that mixed together, I'm going to add more of the flour. I'm not going to add it all. I just want to add enough until we get um, 
a nice dough forming. It may take all of it, it may not. I'm going to add some more, but not, not all of it. And I think that's going to be as much flour as I'm going to add and I'm going to knead this for three or four minutes in the standard mixer. You could do it by hand for six, five, six, seven minutes until you've got a nice, uh, smooth, slightly tacky dough. Okay, so that dough seems to be worked well together. So what I'm going to do now is to take that and just form it into a nice ball And I'm going to put that in a bowl which I've greased and I'm going to just make sure that the grease coats the dough and I'm going to leave that in the bowl covered for 45 minutes to an hour until it doubles in size and then I'll be back with you for the next stage. Okay I'm back with you and uh, our dough has uh, doubled in size after resting so I'm going to turn that out and then I'm going to just knock the air out of it like that and I'm going to cut it into about eight pieces try to make them about the same size and then I'll start off by doing um, the Kaiser roll, the manual way, which is to roll your dough out into a sausage until it's about 12 inches, 25 centimeters in length. And it will shrink a little bit but having rolled it out like that, you then try to make a, a knot and it will shrink back. But try to make a loose knot, putting one end through like that. So then you have two tails. You take the top tail and you poke it underneath like that and you take the bottom tail and you poke it over the top like that. So we'll do one more like that.
so into a knot so that you have your two sides you take the top one and you poke it underneath like that and you take the bottom one and you poke it over the top like that and then you put them onto a baking tray which I've lined with parchment paper and you leave a good gap for them because they're going to rise so then the remaining ones I want to form into balls Right, so then with my cutter I'm going to position it in the middle and push down to make a rosette shape. And that's those ones done and I'm going to uh, put those on the baking sheet but I'm going to turn them upside down for the time being and, and then I'm going to cover the baking sheet with uh, a towel and allow, allow them to prove again until they've doubled in size that would take 20 to 40 minutes depending on the heat of the kitchen and then I'll be back with you and we'll go on to the next stage And I should say uh, that uh, then I will have my oven preheated at uh, 200 Celsius, 180 Celsius with a fan, 400 Fahrenheit, and we'll be ready to bake our uh, rolls. I'll be back with you as soon as these have doubled in size. Right, I'm back with you and uh, the rolls have risen so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lightly brush them with a little bit of egg wash and then I'm going to sprinkle some sesame seeds over the top I'm going to bake them in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes until they've turned a nice golden colour and they're cooked. Five grams of sesame seeds, doesn't take very many. And I'm going to put those in the oven, as I say, and bake them for 15 to 20 minutes. Take them out, let them cool, and then I'll be back with you to show you the results. Right, I'm back with you and I've taken our uh, rosette stroke Kaiser rolls out of the oven. Um, now this is uh, the Kaiser roll that I uh, tied into a knot and uh, that looks quite good and this is one of the rosette rolls. Uh, I had different levels of uh, indentations I suppose I need to ensure that I, I press firmly down um, you can see the pattern on each but you can't see the you can't see the 
uh, the the sort of shaping particularly on some of them. Um, so let's just take I'll take a Kaiser roll and I'll just break that in half and have a look at it. So there we are, that's the inside. I'll have a taste of that. Nice and soft. Ideal to have um, with some ham or some cheese and pickles and such like at lunchtime. Very good indeed. So that's that for this recipe. I hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please give me the thumbs up below the video and click to subscribe to my YouTube channel. In the top right hand corner of the screen as ever there will be a link to the video, uh, a link to the recipe should I say and also there will be um, a link below the video that you can click on and get to the recipe. And I will be back with you with another recipe in the very near future. So until then, happy baking.